founder and managing director. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to quarter three and nine month of FI24 earning call of Ismartra. I would like to thank you all for joining us today. Our earnings presentation and press release has already been uploaded on our website and stock exchanges. I hope you all had a chance to review it. To start with, I would like to begin by highlighting the remarkable performance of Ismartra for quarter three and nine months of FI24 and would be happy to take questions afterwards. I'm glad to announce that our company has had sustainable growth during the quarter, continuing the strong momentum in our operations, and we are continuing to enhance our focus on profitability. During quarter three, the gross booking revenue was of 2,026 crores. Our revenue from operation grew by 18% year on year to 161 crores. EBITDA had grown by 10.9% as compared to quarter 3 of previous fiscal year and was 65 crores and the PAT year on year grew by 9.6% to 45.6 crores for this quarter. During 9-1, the GBR grew by 8.7% to 6,427 uh, 6, crores. The EBITDA had grown by 18% year-on-year to 171 crores. The profitability after tax was 119 crores and uh, an increase of 15% year-on-year. During this quarter three and nine months of FY24, we have put strong focus on maximizing profitability. Coming to our operational performances, during quarter three, our core segment, air travel booking, recorded 22.6 lakh bookings. Hotel segments recorded 92,000 bookings. And bookings in other segments grew by 82.5% to 2.7 lakh. For the period of nine months, there were 83.7 lakh air segment bookings. Hotel line bookings increased by 49% year on year to 3.7 lakh. And other segments had a significant increase of 72% to 7.6 lakh. We have executed several key initiatives during quarter three of fiscal year to drive the growth. I'm happy to announce that during the quarter, we have acquired 13% stake in Echo Hotels and Resorts, reflecting our commitment towards sustainable and responsible business practices. By fostering environmentally conscious initiatives, we aim to shape up the future of travel and hospitality industry positively. At the Global Investor Summit held in London, we officially entered into a memorandum of understanding with government of Uttarakhand. This partnership is aimed to enhance Uttarakhand's global appeal as a tourist destination. Utilizing Isma Trip's extensive global network, the goal is to fortify and expand Uttarakhand's tourism sector. We have also introduced Easy Darshan, providing curated pilgrimage packages across India. These packages offer hassle-free journeys, including transportation, accommodation, guided tour, special puja, prioritizing safety and convenience. Additionally, we have also launched Explore Bharat, Discover the Soul of India, to showcase a nation's rich heritage, culture, landscape, and targeting overseas travelers. These initiatives underscore our continuous expansion in services catering to niche customer segments. Moreover, we have also announced an invite-based subscription program for high net worth individuals. Through this program, we are excited to offer a range of benefits and plans designed to enhance these travel experiences, offering substantial savings, exclusive privileges, and dedicated support that they truly will enjoy in their journey. Our partnership with VI is aimed to bring more convenience and best offers to VI users and ensuring travel bookings come, become easy and seamless for them through VI application. Ismatrip has also been awarded the best online travel marketplace of the year in B2C category by ET Travel Awards. We have always been dedicated 
to offering a wide range of travel services. As travelers' needs evolve, we continuously expand our offerings to meet the demand. Going forward, we are focusing on growing our air jetting businesses globally and expanding our presence into areas, other areas like hotels, holidays, and other travel services. We are also expanding our footprints domestically and exploring ways to grow organic and inorganically. These moves align with our commitment to continuous growth, providing comprehensive travel solutions and ensuring small, smooth experiences for our customers. In conclusion, Isma Trip delivered a strong performance in quarter three and nine months of FY24. We remain to focus on our strategy of striking balance between profits and top line. We are confident that our strong foundation and unwavering commitment will continue to drive our success. Thank you now, and I would like to open the question and floor. Uh, over to you, moderator. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. You may press star and 1 to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Manik Taneja from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. Prashant, just wanted to understand uh, a few things around our this around the quarterly performance. If you could first of all talk about the fact that why our volumes across both air and and the uh, and the hotel side were down on a sequential basis despite Q3 being a seasonally strong quarter. That's question number one. Uh, mm -hmm. The second question was with can regards I, can to. I, okay, please go ahead. Ask the second question. I'll ask the question. The second question was with regards to some of the uh, implied arithmetics given by uh, as per as per the breakup that you have provided on the GBR breakup between airlines, hotels, and other and other segments. So on that front, if I look at the ERR for the hotel side, that appears to be about seventeen thousand odd per my calculation. If it will be great to understand uh, how is this significantly higher than what we see typically for competition. Uh, the third question was with regards to the number of equity shares that we have. Uh, since some of the acquisitions that we made were essentially stock uh, involved, a fresh issue, uh, is there a reason why the total number of equity shares has not gone up? And the fourth question was with regards to our cash flow. Uh, in terms of the negative working capital that we continue to see through S523 as well as the uh, first half of S524. Okay, okay. Uh, Malik, uh, thanks for all the questions. I'll try to answer them in the order you are. Uh, question number one related to the volumes. Uh, the reason why it decreases, Malik, uh, as you would see that our uh, discounts have also gone down dramatically. We have reduced the discounts from about 4% to 2% in this particular quarter. If you compare quarter on, uh, if you quarter, Compared yearly on the yearly basis. Okay. So the the discounts, uh, as we have mentioned, that uh, the company has 
uh, continue to focus on profitability. We have reduced the discounts uh, quite considerably for this particular quarter, which is why you would see the volumes uh, go down. Related to your second question, uh, can you please repeat? That is why I was asking that if you could just wait and let me answer. So the second question was with regards to the split up of the GDR that you provided between airlines, hotels and other segments. Yes, so this time we have, for the first time, we have provided the GDR split uh, as it was requested last time. And you could see in terms of GDR, our flight uh, versus non-air is about 90%. And in terms of revenue, it is uh, somewhere around uh, 78 and 22%. Sure. Uh, so on, I understand that. I was just trying to you know, compute the average uh, hotel booking uh, rate, and that comes out to close to about 17,000 given the volumes that you provide. Well, actually, it doesn't just have hotels, uh, Manik. It has packages as well. Okay. Included. Uh, so, hence, it's a blended uh, uh, number of transactions. This is what probably you're seeing. You're dividing G, uh, GBR by number of transactions. But hotels is not a standalone hotel. It has packages as well. That is why the number uh, might have come out a little bit larger. Okay. The third one was with regards to the equity number of total number of equity shares that we see in your BSC release. Uh, when we made a few acquisitions at the start of this year, uh, that, that involved a, an, an issue of fresh shares, but our total number of equity shares in the DSC release seems to be unchanged uh, through second quarter as well as third quarter. So what explains that? Um, Ashish, would you know this answer? Yeah, I take up the question. The shares were issued in quarter two itself, so there is yeah. no change uh, in uh, quarter two and quarter three shareholders. Okay, I understand that, but... Uh, the number of shares, even from an year-on-year -year perspective, there is no change. Yes. Okay. No, I, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. And the uh, last one was with regards to the cash flow that we see. Uh, uh, cash are we generated negative cash flow both in FY23 as well as in first half of FY24. What explains? the negative cash emission despite... So in this particular time. quarter, I don't think so. There's a cash flow information. Uh, yeah. But yes, uh, compared to last two years, uh, the cash flow has been negative, primarily because we have been depositing uh, slightly more money with the airlines, uh, significantly because the business has increased dramatically compared to the last two years. Okay. And if you could call out the contribution of the increase in take rates that we are seeing at an overall level, because of the GSA agreement at Spizet, and also call out, uh, provide some details on the sales and marketing agreement that we signed up with the customers at the start of this year, which is contributing uh, significantly or uh, significantly to the improvement in terms of take rate because of the 10 crore or revenue recognition that we are doing on a quarterly basis. Sure, uh, we will consider this. Sure, thank you and all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bala Murali Krishna from Oman Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, Prashant. Good evening. So my question is regarding this uh, last three acquisitions which you had on in the month of September. So what is the contribution of those three acquisitions in this uh, quarter and uh, what could be the margins of those businesses? So I think that uh, the the acquisition which we did in last quarter, uh, some of the numbers have added up in this particular quarter. And because of which you might even be seeing that our uh, cost, uh, employee cost has increased. And that is primarily because of the newer acquisition which has happened. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of contribution, Ashiji, uh, are we mentioning uh, contribution separately, or is it uh, two types of files which we are doing right now, standalone and uh, consolidated? It, it is consolidated in the console number. It's not separately mentioned. So it's not separately mentioned at the moment. But yes, uh, in this yes. particular quarter, uh, the effects of the three acquisitions have come. Because of the three acquisitions, our other expenses, uh, one-time other expenses have also increased in this quarter, uh, which is why profitability came slightly lower than what it should have. Uh, but uh, those are one-time expenses related to acquisition, which has become part of our other expenses. Uh, as you would see that our other expenses uh, in this particular quarter jumped to about uh, 30 crores uh, from what it was 
in the last quarter at about 20 crores so uh, uh, you know certain portion of that also went into the three acquisition uh, which is our profitability came slightly lower than what we were in this today yeah, I see that uh, 2.1% of other expenses. So we can uh, re- uh, get to uh, pre- previous 1% of other expenses in the next quarter. Can we do that? Like something similar number, yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, regarding this follow up on these uh, three acquisitions only, so the EBITDA which we are getting from these acquisitions is uh, positive or uh, still it's under the break even? Uh, that would be not, I would not be able to share it because we have not given uh, specific numbers related to these three acquisitions for this particular quarter. Okay, fine. Uh, it's fine as of now we don't have, but uh, because uh, we are focusing on the uh, this uh, holiday package uh, section, so we as investors would like to know how these acquisitions no, I understand, but I may not be able to share because we have not shared any business at this point. Okay, fine. Uh, and regarding this um, discounts, uh, uh, in this quarter, uh, we came to 2.2% uh, from the last quarter of 4%. So, going forward, uh, how it will be turn out uh, percentage of the revenue? Or GDS, GDS, sir? So, of course, uh, you know, we have reduced. The idea was to reduce the discount, but not let GDR fall. And which is why you can see from 4%, the discount went to 2.2%, yet the GDR remained flattish. Uh, between uh, the, the the two quarters, or you know, it didn't decrease much. Uh, the last quarter was uh, 2025 crore, and this quarter is 2026 crores. So that's a significant improvement. Uh, the company is able to optimize reducing discounts uh, without reducing the GBR, and which is uh, which, which are the healthy signs which you should look in the company, where the company is able to grow uh, not on the primarily on the basis of the discounts which they are offering. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Santosh from Pat to Wilt. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, sir, I have a question regarding your acquisition in this quarter about uh, Eco Hotels. Looks like this is a hotel in Maharashtra. Uh, can you explain us like what is the rationale behind the acquisition? Doesn't seem like you know it trades in BSC, but it doesn't have any revenue as such as per what they have published. Uh, so what is the revenue? It's a, it's a chain in the UK, and uh, yes, they have a they have they are starting up the operations in India. It's basically an ecological. Uh, we have already acquired three hotel chain, as you must be aware of. Uh, eco hotel chain basically will allow us to foray into uh, sustainability, and uh, you know. Uh, providing customers a sustainable way to travel. Uh, there has been strong momentum towards that side where customers are looking for uh, ecological and sustainable ways to travel. And this is why we have taken a minority stake, uh, stake of 13% in this company. And w- what will be the revenue of this uh, hotel chain hotel globally? Um, I may not be sure about their numbers currently, but it's a minority uh, stake which we have built in the company. Given that uh, their chances to grow in India are quite considerably higher and we can promote them, we can cost promote them in our platform, we have taken minority stakeholders, uh, stakes in the company. And this minority stake is only in like India entity or it's all over the it's in the India entity. Okay, okay, got it. And uh, regarding the easy Darshan, it looks like, you know, you are, have aggressive plans to promote tourism in India, which is great. Uh, do you have a strategy for uh, newly opened up, you know, Ayodhya Temple? We see a lot of hotels in India for, you know, tourism is going to be generated there. So, any specific plan for that? Of course, uh, no, that's a good question. Uh, we really believe that Ayodhya can become the, the next Vatican city for the world, where not just people from within India, but even from outside India can come and travel. And uh, at this matter, we have very strong plans to grow along with uh, as the number of footprints in Ayodhya increases. Uh, a case in point which we have seen first hand is actually uh, Varanasi. Varanasi about 10 years ago used to see about 25 to 30,000 uh, tourists on daily basis. And nowadays, Banaras is seeing anywhere between 4 lakh to 5 lakh tourists on daily basis. So, you know, uh, religious tourism is actually a very big category in India. 
and which is why we have, step, uh, we have started a separate services altogether related to it because it needs to be dealt differently. Uh, we have realized most of the time uh, these packages are uh, booked by the, uh, by the sons and the daughters uh, for, the, uh, for the elderly payments. And hence, uh, the requirements, the needs, everything is very different. And we are looking forward to grow in this segment. Uh, there, there are special plans which we have related to, uh, you know, Ayodhya. Uh, but we will grow as the capacity of Ayodhya continues to increase. Got it. Okay, thank you. Uh, so coming back to this hotel uh, acquisition, so do, do we have any like, further plans you know, that we'll be going to acquire other hotels you know, in India in the future? Or? That would be difficult for me to say at this particular moment. Uh, but yes, uh, if there is a company like Yuzmata, which is asset light, which is disruptive in nature, which is profitable in nature, and if it is adding value to both the companies, uh, we may not shy away. But at this moment, it will be difficult for me to say whether we will or we will not. Okay. Got it. Sir. Last one, last question. Like, you know, regarding your service cost and employment with expense, Service cost looks like nine month period it, it increased like threefold, and employee expenses are almost double. Uh, so can you explain like, you know, uh, the reasoning behind it? Like, is it like your operating costs or for example? No, I mean uh, I did explain just now. I mean it. Uh, the employee cost specifically in this particular quarter increased. Uh, you know specifically because we have added three more subsidies. And with those three subsidies, uh, their employees also got added into this cost structure at the moment. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. And all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Baya Murli Krishna from Oman Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the follow-up opportunity. Uh, so I'm talking about regarding the guidance. We have a guidance of uh, PBT of 250 crores for the year, FA24 earlier. So uh, are we on track or do we expect any uptick on the guidance? Also? So, uh, you know, we we would be trying our level best to reach that number, but it looks like we might fall short uh, by about 25, 30 crores, specifically because I said that in these three acquisitions for this particular quarter, uh, the other expenses had increased uh, from the amount which uh, we were not expecting, and some of the other expenses may even come in the next quarter. Uh, because of which, uh, I think uh, uh, we may have to change our guiding uh, guidelines to about 220 odd crores okay. for tax. Yeah, sure. Thank you. And uh, one more thing: uh, recently, we have seen a surge in the app downloads of the Ismatrix. So, do we see any uh, bookings from the new users uh, recently in the last one month or one? Is there any surge in those app uh, because of those app downloads of the new users? That is correct. Uh, you know, uh, we took a nationalistic stand uh, in this particular quarter, and uh, you know, on the basis of that, uh, we we got a lot of people uh, who basically stood by with our decision, and on the basis of that, the number of app downloads, the number of website visits. Did increase. I may not be able to share all the numbers at this particular moment, but yes, uh, overall visibility of the company has increased many calls in this particular quarter. Oh, thank you. Thanks a lot. For all thank you very much. A reminder to all the participants you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Madhu Chanda Day from MC Pro. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first is a housekeeping question. Uh, there's a sharp spike in the depreciation and amortization expense this quarter. Uh, if you could explain that. Uh, Ashiji? Ashiji, are you on the line? Yeah, I'm on the line. Am I audible? Yes. yes sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Basically, uh, this quarter, uh, we did few acquisitions. And because of this acquisition, we recorded intangible in our balance sheet. And now we are amortizing the same over the period of useful life. So that's why it has been increased. 
So uh, we can expect uh, this run rate to continue for because I was also thinking that it could be goodwill amortization. But uh, after 3.7 crore, uh, uh, what would be the recurring uh, run rate of this goodwill amortization? It will be recurring in now. Now it will be recurring because it's the uh, uh, every quarter it will be amortized. Okay, and uh, you expect to amortize this, amortize this over a period of five years, or useful five, uh, useful life of the asset. Useful life of the asset. Okay. Uh, yes. Now uh, I have a question, um, which is a little more general question. Like last quarter, uh, uh, the, uh, the company shifted its focus. Uh, on profitability. I mean, of course, it was a profitable company all along, but there was a uh, in between. There was this uh, thing that you, you uh, kind of uh, uh, resorted to increasing advertising expenses, and you wanted to grab mark, market share. But last quarter, the rationale was we will, we want to be more profitable. We were guiding to 250 crore PBT, and uh, you know, growing GBR was not the focus. And we have seen this in this quarter, although it's a seasonally strong quarter. GBR has been flat sequentially. There's a YOY decline. But given this acquisitions and other pressures, and in fact, uh, ad expense also as a percentage of GBR is up, maybe because of this uh, up post Lakshwadeep thing, uh, we saw you guys advertising in a big way. So basically, the margin has contracted uh, despite this change in strategy where you are not chasing market share. So the result is you have lost market share and uh, uh, albeit the, the loss of market share, the profitability has not improved. Uh, whereas if I see your largest competitor, they, their uh, GBR has, um, uh, you know, in, improved YOY sequentially. They have been able to maintain margin as well. So, I mean, if you could explain how do you plan to tackle this going forward? No, Madhu, uh, good question, Madhu. Uh, so, Madhu, I would like to, I would want you and others to see company in more holistic way rather than see on quarter on quarter basis. Uh, yes, some quarters, uh, you know, uh, GBR increases, some quarters GBR don't increase. For us, the bigger win in this particular quarter was how do we maintain, uh, you know, our GBR while reducing the discounts. Uh, and we did reduce the discounts quite considerably sharply in this particular quarter. And yet we were able to maintain, uh, you know, the, num uh, the number of uh, GMB, the GMB in the same way. So, hence, uh, we are taking one win at a time. And, uh, you know, you also have to understand the DNA and the, you know, DNA of the founders of this company. The company was built bootstrap. We, uh, we are very high on perseverance uh, and grit. And hence, uh, you know, uh, one quarter here and there uh, does not really bother us as much as what we, it, whether it is aligned with our long-term strategy or not. And in long-term strategy, you know, we have, as we have mentioned earlier, we have started experimenting with charging convenience fees. Uh, we have, we are reducing the discounts while the idea is to continuously, uh, you know, continuously maintain or grow our GBR. But some quarters, yes, you're right, uh, we may not be able to maintain our GBR, specifically because uh, we have taken a call of reducing the discounts. Uh, next quarter onwards, I think we should see, uh, you know, things change dramatically, uh, especially uh, in this particular quarter, as you have mentioned. The company did gain a lot of, uh, you know, eyeballs, and uh, there was a lot of uh, public all across India, uh, which was on our side. Uh, with very limited amount of uh, marketing, uh, we were able to gain a lot of, uh, you know, uh, people's attention. Uh, though I would like to say that that was not the intent. The intent was very clear that, you know, we were very sure of what should be done, whether respective it uh, financially makes sense or not. Uh, good thing is that for, for the company, uh, it did make sense uh, financially, but the call was very nationalistic in approach and just to do the right thing. But uh, going forward, I think, uh, you know, you should be able to see strong numbers come. So I didn't understand what has changed. I mean, I understand that, uh, you know, uh, post that, uh, you know, that Lakshwadeep uh, uh, Maldives controversy, uh, you did get a lot of limelight because of a particular stance that you took. But is that the reason why you expect 
this trend to reverse, uh, you know, the stagnating GBR in a Q4? Or is there something that I'm missing? So GBR, GBR went down specifically because I said that we reduced the discount dramatically. The profits did not grow up because uh, our dollar expenses grew by about 10 crores. And yes, right. uh, in this part, in, you know, and then otherwise as well, uh, in terms of acquisitions, when you're acquiring multiple companies, there are certain things which uh, which you expect and which may not come out the way as you were expecting. So because of this, uh, you know, some expenses in terms of other expenses increased in this particular quarter. Otherwise, uh, we should uh, we were expecting to see five, six more crores of profit in this particular quarter. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manik Taneja from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the follow-up opportunity. Uh, Prashant, just trying to pick your thoughts around the previous question itself. Uh, when we went for an IPO two years back, we were very clear that we wanted to continue to gain market share and solidify or reduce the lead of the number one player. Uh, and uh, in terms of GBR, we have been the number two OTA uh, in the industry. Uh, with the way our, the change in strategy that we have seen this year, uh, it appears that we will essentially lose the number two spot in terms of uh, being the second largest OTA in India. Uh, would you be okay to essentially do that? That's question number one. The second question was a clarification on the other expenses. Historically, this also included some part of the expenses that we would incur around our B2B business. And whenever that business would do well, this number would increase. So is there some element of that contribution as well, in addition to uh, some to the acquisition impact? And how should we be thinking about this expense on a go-forward basis? Uh, related to your first question, uh, Malik, uh, we would like to maintain our second uh, position spot. And uh, we are working towards it in this particular quarter. You should see... Uh, that number uh, do its work, and I don't think so. There is any uh, there is any uh, threatening towards us being in that position. You're right. Uh, in this particular year, we have taken a little bit more conservative approach uh, rather than growing the business. We uh, we wanted to maintain our profitability and grow our profitability. Uh, that may not be the case uh, going forward, uh, but for uh, this particular year, we did take that cost. And that's the management's call. Uh, the board, we decided it together. Uh, I'm forgetting what was your second question again? So my second question was regards the other expenses, which you also remarked that's become about 31 odd crores versus 21 crores last quarter. And typically that also includes some part of the B2B uh, or the or the cost that we incur related to the ramp up of the B2B uh, business. So how much of this uh, increase essentially is acquisition related and how much of it is B2B business related and how should we be thinking about this cost item on a go-forward basis? So half, half of it is, came, is coming from uh, related to acquisitions and half of it is coming from B2B. You're, you're absolutely right. And uh, B2B business, uh, as long as it is done uh, basically in advance, uh, the company is uh, quite happy to uh, continue to grow that business. And hence, uh, that number may increase in the future, uh, but that number also brings uh, profitability and revenue alongside. So that okay. that number is something which we are not worried about. It's just that the other expenses, uh, which basically turn out to be an expense expense, uh, cause this company a little bit of a hard buy. But otherwise, uh, P2B business is something which we are excited about and we would like to continue to grow that business. And the last one, if you could clarify on with regards to the outlook that we had, so at the start of the year, we were talking about a significant growth from a GBR standpoint. Subsequently, we shifted focus to profit, and we had talked about a certain amount of increase in terms of PAT for FY24 uh, last quarter. If you could update us on the revised outlook on that front. So as I said that our uh, last quarter, when we said that uh, we are focusing of uh, uh, we are focusing PBT of about 50 crores, 
uh, I believe that, uh, you know, we will have to change our strategy to about 220 odd crores for this particular year. Okay, okay, sure. So thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. As there are no further questions, I will now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Prashant Pitti for closing comments. Sure. Well, thank you all for joining us today. The quarter concluded positively and we maintain optimism regarding the robust growth trajectory for our wide range of services. We are excited about the opportunities ahead of us as we have a solid value proposition for entire sustainable performances. We look forward to meeting you in next quarter. Please stay safe, healthy, and feel free to reach us for any unremained question answers. Thank you once again.